Okay, we've talked about simple forms. We talked about AB, we talked about ABA. Let's just stretch it out a little bit now. The form that we're going to talk about now is called a rondo. And as you look at concert programs, you'll often see that listed as the title of a movement. So if you see that, here's, there's your chance to really practice listening for it. So what happens in a rondo is like a sandwich. So you have an A section, the part that you hear at the very beginning, that the composer will often put in there twice, just to make sure that you know that that was the A section, no mistake. So the A section. And then you will have something different, so a B section that we're used to. So let's consider that A section as our bread for our sandwich. So get a slice of bread, and now we're going to put some bologna on our bread. So that's the B section, something different. Now, all right, now A is coming back. So, so far it looks like an ABA form. So slap another slice of bread on that sandwich. We're going to make a nice Dagwood special here, a nice big fat sandwich. So now we're going to put some cheese. So we have something new that comes in. It's not the same as B, it's not the same as A. Whole new material, that is C. Then we get another slice of bread. A always comes back. It doesn't always come back in its complete length. It might just be a fragment of it, so you can remember that we're in rondo form. But it's always going to be there. Then we could get really crazy and we can put a donut in our sandwich. So we've got another section that's completely different. It's our donut. And then another slice of bread. Then we can put an egg and another slice of bread. And I don't know, a fajita and another slice of bread. We could really extend it a long way. But for the most part, you're not going to see anything that goes more like than beyond D and E um, in terms of the formal structure. So um, a very easy example of this to listen to, and I'll put a link up for this for you, is the spring movement from Vivaldi's Four Seasons. It's a really clear um, rondo form because it's got the da 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 when you hear it, you keep, oh gosh, here it comes again. So you know, it sort of gets annoying even after a while. But let's listen now to a rondo movement from a sonata by Haydn, who was a classical period composer that loved rondos in the classical period. So here's our A section. That's our A section. We can tell that it is mostly disjunct. There's a lot of jumping notes. It's got a lot of staccato, but it's also got some legato in there, so we have contrasting sections there. And the bottom part is mostly little snippets of chords. So they're just like little decorative kind of things, really. It gives us a sense of harmony, but it also just sort of flips in there. He wrote in the repeat, so I played each section twice because that's the way Haydn wrote it. And that's so, as I said, you make sure you know that that's the A section. All right, here's our second section. is that very different in style. It's moving downward instead of upward. It has a lot of dynamic contrast. We have big, fat chords instead of little snippety bits. But he also puts it in a different key. The first theme is in D major. For this part, he goes to D minor. So you get the same sort of set of notes, but a slightly different feel. So let's hear the second half of that B. And then that would be repeated. That obviously has a closure to it. There's an ending feeling at that. So we know, okay, end of B. What should we expect? Et cetera, et cetera. So we hear that whole section again. 
Here's our C part. So that's very different. It's a light, sort of bouncing sort of sound. We have that same sort of not very filled out harmony, but it's on the beats instead of bump, 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 bump. It's not sort of dropping in in the middle of things. And here he goes off in another key altogether. So we started in D, now he's in G. So it takes you into a new key structure and a very different kind of style. Let's continue with it. So again, we have a little ending. But here's the problem. We went off into another key. So we can't just jump right back in to the original A because it's not going to be in the right key. So he puts in a little filler section to get us back. So if, think about it like you had to change trains and get onto the, you know, you're at the subway, you had to go change to another train. We're going somewhere, we're getting there. So that's all very familiar. We've heard this, what, three times now? It's time for something different. So we have a lot more chordal things instead of bump, 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 we got all the notes filled in. Ending. So instead of just, you know, going, okay, here's A section again, doing it exactly the same way, he added in more interesting harmony and then put the big ending that we like to have so we know that the piece was over. So that's a simple rondo, A, B, A, C, A in this case. As I said, we could go on and on. There are also some things like modified rondos where the composer might like B so much that they throw it back in there one more time before they come around. So if you're listening, you think, well, this sounds like a rondo, but there's a part I've already heard once before. That's okay because composers will sometimes do that to you just to keep their own lives interesting and make your listening a little more interesting as well. So that's a rondo, your musical sandwich with bread that keeps all the parts in together. Now let's go on to theme and variation, which will be the most complicated form that we think about. 